What's going on, Port fans? Welcome back to another video on my channel. It is round 18. It's time to preview Port Adelaide versus GWS Adelaide Oval Sunday at 4:10 p.m. Make sure you get to the game and support the boys. The last day of school holidays, kids get in free. So make sure you get down there. It's going to be beautiful weather and a beautiful day to support the boys and hopefully get them across the line at the Fortress. Let's dissect this game and see what exactly it looks like it's going to bring. It's going to be an absolute beauty. Well, Port fans, I'm up and about because it's a new week. We've had our loss. We've had our time to recuperate and um, forget everything that happened last weekend. It's a new week of footy and it's time to get into it. It is ready to go this week. Sunday twilight, we have to wait that long for a game. And we're back on the Sundays um, for the next few weeks as well, I'm pretty sure. So nonetheless, Sunday twilight, Port versus GWS. It's going to be a cracking game of footy. GWS are in fine form, and we are looking a bit depleted at the moment without Ryder. Uh, Robbie Gray may or may not play. Um, he's still a proposition at the moment going into the week, so he'll probably be uh, decided at the last minute. And also, Tommy Jonas is not quite ready to come back yet either. So we are pretty depleted at the moment, but we do have some options to come in, and I'm obviously filming this before selection is uh, being announced. Let's just get on with the predictions and the preview for this week. I'm simply labeling this, labeling this one a must-win game. It's as simple as that for Port fans. If you want to stay, um, if the club wants to stay within the top two, within reach of the top two, and push for that, um, securing that top four spot. This is a must-win game to stay in touch with any chances we have. With six games to go, every game is crucial. We have a big six weeks fixture-wise as well. Big games that we must win, and this is our perfect opportunity to you know, settle us down a bit and really push forward and solidify our spot in the top four. Our main focus this week as well should be on our skills, because as we know, watching last week was one of the worst displays I've ever seen um, from a team playing footy. It was like watching Oz kick. If I wanted to see skills like that, I'd watch, go down to the local ground and watch under nines kick a footy for an hour. But that was last week. This week's a different week. Back at the Portress, it's great weather, and we seem to be a team that plays to the opposition. And what I mean by that is we play to their level. So we lowered ourselves to Fremantle's level, but... You know, games against Richmond, games against the Bulldogs and Melbourne. Uh, we were pretty good against uh, Hawthorne at one stage, but we obviously lost that game. Uh, the Crows as well. You know, if we're playing at that top end level against top end teams, I'm very confident going into finals that we can do some damage. But it's teams like Carlton, like St Kilda, Fremantle last week. If we lowered our standards to their level. We're going to get caught out, and we did last week. We cannot let it slip this week against GWS, and I think the boys know that. They let they let an opportunity miss last week. That was a big opportunity. And this one this week against the Giants, who beat the Tigers at home, um, it was a fluke. I don't know. GWS obviously don't... Tra uh, Richmond don't travel well, as we know. But the point is, do we have an opportunity here um, to really make a, make a statement, say, yes, we're back. GWS have the same uh, problem. They can make a statement and say, we're going to make finals this year, and we're still in the hunt. No doubt about it. With the midfield like Canilio, Ward, Kelly, you know, these types of players with Shield as well. I mean, <laughs> Toby Green throw him in there. They have a very, very classy midfield. And, you know, put up against the likes of Wines, Power Pepper, um, Ebert going in there as well, Pollock on the outside, Rockcliffe as well, um, Robbie Gray if he gets up and plays in the midfield a bit, it's, it's going to be a cracking game, it's going to be one out of the midfield. Um, and the stats still tell that story as well. You look at the clearances through across the year, it's a pretty compelling stat, Porter first on the list, number two, GWS. The, number two clearance, two, the top two clearance sides in the AFL will be facing off, start facing off against each other in what should be a great fight in the middle. But also, you look at that as well. GWS have won the past three against the Power. Um, two of them at, at, at the Adelaide... No, one of them against um, at the Adelaide Oval. Two, obviously, in Canberra, with a recent one going down by five goals last year. 
So that's not a good record against the Giants, and I reckon we need to um, correct that. Replacing Ryder is going to be a big factor for Port. I think who do they, what do they go with? Do they go structurally, um, bring in Frampton, or do they just do what they did earlier in the year, play Hoff and Charlie? What, for me personally, if they're playing Hoff and Charlie in that ruck position, they're either doing, um, they know that Paddy will be back quite quickly, whether that's two or three weeks, or they're going to, you know, rest him up, and then they'll do the same as earlier in the year and just fight through it. We're in a different position, though. That's the thing. This time um, around, we have no Marshall. Jonas is out, so putting Dougal in the ruck is going to open up our defense. No Marshall, so you're only leaving basically Watts down there and Charlie to go down there on the odd occasion. Billy coming in helps us structurally be sound. And if he is in, players like Charlie and Hoff can play deep. Watts can be that link up. And it will work out because Billy has an opportunity against uh, the likes of Lobb and Simpson. Speaking of Charlie Dixon, he must stand up this week, whether it's on the scoreboard or in the ruck. It's as simple as that for Charlie. It's his time now. He's gone through this year. He's fought hard, the poor fella, but he just hasn't hit the mark. And it's time for him to stand up and fight through any form that he hasn't found and really stand up as a leader as well. He's now... You know, three years into his contract deal at Port, he's been well known now as an aggressor. He's a barometer in the side, and he must fight his way through and really be a big strong man on the weekend. He must set the tone in the ruck or down in the forward half. The most important thing, though, this weekend is the fact that we um, are coming up against a side who they're desperate, and we're desperate too. Not only to find and res find our respect. Uh, gain our respect back. The Giants are there to make a case for the eight. We're there for a top four. This is a huge game of footy. And if it just it just proves it in the stats how even these teams are. They were spread apart earlier in the year by uh, ladder positions. But you look at disposals. They're both high possession teams. Sixth on the um, in the leader board for Port. Fifth, the Giants. Score-wise, a very um, different um, opposition as well. It's GWS averaging 84 points a game and Port Adelaide averaging 83. So very even there again. We need to hit the scoreboard and really need to take our opportunities this week. And being in the top eight and only averaging 80-odd is a very, very damning stat. And you look at that inside 50s as well. Port are sixth, the Giants are fifth. Clearance is first, inside 50 sixth. You know, more disposals than most of the league, and you're only averaging 83. You're wasting the ball. And Port Adelaide, as we know, wastes the ball too damn much with too many handballs and too many um, missed opportunities with skills and ball efficiency going forward. Need to find that consistency and find that um, find that right tone going forward because this is a massive game. And if we get it wrong, this is going to hurt our season massively. We cannot lose two in a row. But we do respond really well. And the big bonus as well, it's at the Portress. We have only lost one game at the Portress this year. And that was to Geelong in round five. It's a big opportunity again to make a statement. Look, to be honest, I feel like they'll do something else with changes this week. They'll bring in some some gold plot. I can just see Kenny bringing in someone that we know will usually come in after a poor loss. But it, no one's... Standing out in the SNFL at the moment. Predictions for the game, Port fans. I feel like Port Adelaide should, will get the job done. 15 points they'll get over the line. And I reckon Charlie Dixon is going to stand up and make a statement um, against the GWS Ruckman and or down forward and kick a bag or he have so many hit outs and really, really um, set the tone throughout the game because we need it. That's it, Port fans. That wraps up this round 18 preview of Port Adelaide versus GWS. Comment below what you think will happen in the game. Give us your predictions for the week ahead. I'll be at the game, so make sure um, you support loudly if you are going as well. We have to get the boys across the line. Subscribe to the channel if you are new for plenty more Port Adelaide content coming to you on a weekly basis. Um, check out a couple of the videos that I've done previously as well. Make sure you follow the Portress Podcast as well, 8pm every Wednesday night, and on Facebook as well for all of the praise updates for Facebook Live. My name's Anthony Port fans. Thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, come the pack.